At the beginning of the dark side player's second turn, the light side player uses Luke Skywalker's ability, which reads, Reaction. After your opponent's turn begins, remove one focused token from this unit. The dark side player advances the Death Star dial by one, and then, since the balance of the force is on the dark side, he advances the dial by one additional tick. In the refresh phase, the dark side player removes one focus token from each card he controls. The dark side player has one card in his hand, and he decides to pass on his optional discard. He then draws five cards from his deck to arrive at his reserve value of six. During his deployment phase, the dark side player places one focus on his affiliation card, one on the Emperor's Web, and three on the Heart of the Empire, to generate five resources, and he plays Darth Vader from his hand. He then plays Force Choke, which has a cost of zero and reads, Action, deal one damage to a target character or creature unit. The dark side player deals one damage to Luke Skywalker and then triggers Darth Vader's reaction, which reads, After you play a Sith event card, deal one damage to a target unit. This deals another point of damage to Luke. Luke has reached his damage capacity and is destroyed. Feeling aggressive, the dark side player decides to engage the hit and run objective with Darth Vader, declaring him as an attacker. The only light side unit, R2-D2, is exhausted and cannot defend. When no defenders are declared, the attacker will win the edge battle automatically. The dark side player, however, still wants to place a card in his edge stack. The revealed card is Target of Opportunity, which reads, If you are the attacking player, deal one damage to the engaged objective. Resolving this effect, the dark side player deals one damage to hit and run. Having won an easy edge battle, the dark side player now strikes with Darth Vader. Vader's two unit damage icons are ignored because there are no participating enemy units. Vader does have two blast damage icons though, so he deals two damage to hit and run. At the end of the engagement, there are no surviving units that participated as defenders, so the engagement resolves unopposed. This means that an additional point of damage is dealt to the hit-and-run objective. The hit-and-run objective has reached its damage capacity of 4 and is destroyed. It is then placed in the dark side victory pile. Each time a light side objective is destroyed, the Death Star dial advances by one point for each objective card in the dark side's victory pile. As this is the first light side objective in his pile, the dark side player advances the dial by one point. The dark side player does not commit any additional units to the force. Each player counts zero icons for the force struggle, so the balance of the force does not change. The dark side player's second turn is now complete, and it is the light side player's turn. Play continues to alternate in this fashion until one player achieves his victory condition. The dark side player wins the game if the Death Star dial advances to 12. The light side player wins the game if he destroys three dark side objectives. Things may be looking grim for the light side player, but he is about to draw five cards and refresh his lost objective card. He is also holding the powerful event card, Return of the Jedi, which allows him to put a discarded Force user unit like Luke or Obi-Wan Kenobi back into play. Also, all of the dark side units in play are exhausted. The fate of the galaxy hangs in the balance of this next turn. Who will prevail? <laughs>